Hello and welcome to my talk, Running Rack and Race Faster with Truffle Ruby. My name is Benoit Dalloz and I'm the project lead of Truffle Ruby. Truffle Ruby, if you don't know yet, is a high performance Ruby implementation by Oracle Labs. It uses the GraalVM JIT compiler to achieve its good performance. It targets full compatibility with Ruby 2.6, uh, including the C extension, and it's open source and on GitHub. There are two ways you can run Truffle Ruby, like two VMs. So you can write on the GVM, uh, and then the main advantage is you can interoperate with Java conveniently. And you can write in native mode to the default, where the Truffle Ruby interpreter and the Graal compiler are compiled ahead of time to a native executable. So this is like the end result is a bit like MRI, like you have one executable with everything in it. And this provides faster startup, faster warm up, and lower footprint. And the reason is basically you have a VM specialized for Truffle Ruby with nothing else. Doesn't need to be as generic as a GVM, doesn't need to load classes dynamically. No, it's just like running Truffle Ruby, and that's what it's specialized for. In terms of compatibility, uh, Truffle Ruby is getting pretty good. Uh, it targets 2.6, uh, and many C extension work out of the box. So OpenSSL, Zlib, Reaper, Nokogiri, uh, many database driver, and so on, they just work. And uh, there's a good chance that if you try a random C extension, it might just work on Truffle Ruby. Uh, and this is a big advantage, like if you, if you want to try your existing application uh, on Truffle Ruby, if you come from CRuby, probably it will work without changes to, to the gem file or very minimal ones. In terms of completeness, according to Ruby spec, Truffle Ruby is past 97% of the spec, which is quite good and actually the best, uh, the best ratio for all Ruby alternative implementation. One of the big Truffle Ruby goal is to run Ruby code faster. And Truffle Ruby is already doing great on many CPU intensive benchmark and on micro benchmarks. Uh, but what about web application, right? This is what we, we look at today. Um, and Trevor wants to run your Ruby code in parallel and doesn't have a global lock, so that works well. That works great. Uh, but for C extension, the situation is a bit more complicated. Uh, there, because some C extension expect to, to run all their C code under a single lock, uh, we actually have a global lock enabled by default for maximum compatibility. And then Gravium as a project provides new tooling that works across languages. Um, so we have, for instance, cross language debuggers and profilers and so on. As a simple example here, we have the CPU sampler, which is a sampling profiler. And to run it on Truffle Ruby, it's really simple. You do Truffle Ruby minus minus CPU sampler, and then your program. And what it gives is like this report at the end of uh, when the program ends, it gives you like how much time was spent where um, including like how much of it was the in compile code, how much in interpreter, and so on. So today I will look at the real simpler benchmark, uh, or RSB, which is a project by Noah Gibbs, who did a lot of benchmarking on Ruby 3 times 3. And so Ruby 3 times 3 is therefore to make Ruby 3 3 times faster than Ruby 2.0. And RSB consists of two, of two things. So it does a simple rack application and a simple Rails 4 application with both of them with various roles. Um, and it's a Rails 4 application because Noah wants to compare to Ruby 2.0. Uh, so you cannot use the latest Rails for that. Uh, they, both, uh, they both use WRK uh, to benchmark like how fast it is, the throughput and the latency. And and of course, it provides a, a harness with various configuration in which you can configure almost everything. Uh, so here we have to focus on a few things. Uh, and what we decided to benchmark in this talk is the rack application with a simple ERB template, which comes from the Siri benchmark, and the Rails 4 application serving a plain response, which is the default for SB. And both of these will run on Puma, which is a well-known uh, web server. So we measure two rubies here. We measure Ruby 2.6 because the version that Truffle Ruby is compatible with right now. And the latest Truffle Ruby in GVM mode because the GVM here is a bit faster than in native mode. I also wanted to try uh, the latest JRuby, uh, but that didn't really work uh, because there's a bug in JRuby when using JRuby with Puma and keep a live connection. Uh, basically JRuby seems idle and 
is like extremely slow. So yeah, there's no point to report this this number because there's just like yeah, this is clearly a bug. Uh, it's unfortunate though it's not been solved because like this is known for more than a year now. Um, and then yeah, but the only thing we could do is uh, okay, don't use key value collection. So create a new connection every time. But this is this is a huge overhead. And <laughs> and if we do this, we end up benchmarking basically the kernel and the network stack more than Ruby. So that's not interesting. <clears throat> so we have three concurrency settings here we can tweak. Uh, there's the number of server threads. Actually, we can also use processes on Ruby. Uh, and then there's a the number of WRK request threads and the number of connection inside WRK. And here, to, to make it simple, we use the same number for all, uh, which means we use the same number of requests and several threads, so they just match each other. Uh, and each request thread to maintain one connection, uh, so it's very simple on the WRK side. And one of the goals of using this is that we have extra processing on both the WRK side and the server side. Uh, so really focus on like, oh, how fast can we process one request? Uh, run this on the eight core processor and actually kept frequency scaling and turbo core or turbo boost enabled. Uh, because just that what happens on real server, like they don't disable this because it's just like more, more efficient, right? And what this means is like when you go to many threads, I uh, don't have a perfect uh, scaling uh, because simply like when more CPU run, the the, frequent, the maximum frequency uh, reduces uh, to about over 18. Uh, always does show our peak performance. So basically, uh, I run a request until the server is warm, until the number of requests uh, becomes quite stable. Uh, and the reporting numbers are in requests per second. Uh, and each run is from the WRK. So it ran for 10 seconds, then it knows how many requests it managed to do in that time, just divides it by 10, and that's it. Uh, these are very small rack and Rails applications, so they, they probably do not present well real application. And uh, keep in mind that condition for measurement are ideal. Uh, like there's just one request after another, it's very nice. And the real world, of course, uh, might be very different than that. So let's start with rack. Uh, so here we have a small ERB template, if you remember. And what we see is Ruby starts here at 20,000 requests per second. I would say per rack, right? It's very minimal, uh, but still quite impressive. Uh, and then the issue is like as we go with higher number of threads uh, for Ruby, it just becomes slower because this is global lock, right? Threads are not very really useful on Ruby, uh, at least when there's some CPU work here. And like even though like you would think, hey, there's a lot of IO, well, you just need to to pass the HTTP and then <laughs> generate the HTTP response and every, everything in the middle with all the middleware, right? Um, so the end is here still quite CPU intensive. And so yes, every restraint doesn't do well. On the other if we look at, on the other end, if we look at Truffle Ruby, we see it's over 30,000 requests per second, which is quite good. Uh, and then it just scales up with more cores. Of course, what you could do is you could run a uh, Ceruby uh, with multiple processes, and that gives you this. Uh, and that looks a lot better for Ceruby now. Uh, I mean, Truffle Ruby is still uh, quite ahead, uh, with like almost 20,000 requests more every time. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's cool. You can do this. On the other end, when you have multiple processes, you also have quite a few disadvantages or if you turn it around, you have some advantages of using threads, like a single process with threads instead of many processes. Like for instance, if you need to just in time compile the program, um, if you have threads, you only need to do it once. If you have a process, you need to do once per process. Um, if you have common data structure, either at the virtual machine level or at the Ruby level, for instance, in some constants or whatnot, they are always shared by threads. You control what is shared, and it's very easy to deduplicate. Uh, on the other end, if you if you have processes, you need to rely on fork. If you don't have fork, it's simple. Then you just multiply the memory footprint by the number of processes. If you use fork, you hope that copy on write will work well enough. But sometimes I just touch a memory and we'll end up duplicating a lot of things. Uh, and so overall, like you, your heap become more and more fragmented and shares less and less. Um, of course, if you don't use fork, you cannot have the fork pitfalls. So for instance, like 
one of, of the well-known one is like when you fork, you actually inherit all five descriptors. So if at the point you forked, you would have a connection database, that would be a big problem because now like there are two processes that would share the same connection and they could just like, yeah, get the wrong one, get the wrong response for the database. Uh, and then of course, like the obvious thing, like we don't have to manage multiple processes, just one, so it's it's a lot simpler. Don't have to think about all this extra uh, all this extra interaction between processes. And finally, if you need to communicate, or if you need to synchronize between threads, it's much faster and it's much easier than within processes. Like try synchronizing between multiple processes, it's it's extremely complicated and it's very slow. <clears throat> so let's have a look at Rails. So here we have the CRUB with threads and with processes and Truffle Ruby again. And CRUB again with more threads, it just becomes slower. And as the baseline, it's reached almost 3,000 requests per second. Uh, this is a plain response for Rails, right? So that's why it's quite fast. Um, but then Truffle Ruby reached like 6,000 uh, requests per second. Uh, that's I think quite impressive. It's like a two x speed up on one thread, um, and then as you keep scaling up, Truffle Ruby like keeps a, a good way ahead, and uh, and a reach reaches here about eighteen thousand requests per second. So I have to to note a few things here. So uh, the benchmark here I showed they run with a C extension log disabled. The only C extension here is the Puma parser, the Puma HTTP parser. And that one is safe to run in parallel. Um, and this issue, like whether we can run a C extension in parallel or not, whether the C extension needs a global lock, that's something that actually will come as well for Ruby 3, uh, for the Rector project by Koichi. Um, basically, for C extension to work in multiple Rector, uh, you will need to mark them as thread safe or can be executed in parallel. And basically, Truffle Ruby is kind of the same thing, like this, like, does this extension have its own synchronization for the state at the C level or not. Uh, and actually, Photophoroby is less restrictive for Rector. Like, for instance, you cannot uh, pass object between different Rectors, uh, non shareable object. But uh, in Photophoroby, you can, that, that doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is like when you have a global variable in C, do you probably synchronize access to it and so on. Uh, and yeah, this is something we want to work on and to make it easier. Uh, to mark the extension properly as safe uh, to be executed in parallel. And then another thing we did here is like there's a splitting limit in, in Truffle by default was, uh, was just like too low for Rails, basically like Rails is still quite a big code base, right? So even when we run this in plain response, uh, we're already like above the splitting limit. Um, so here we need to tweak it and yeah, the thing is, of course, we want to fix this so we don't have to touch this limit in the future. But actually, like, we probably want to remove this limit uh, because it just doesn't. Yeah, there's another limit that grows with the with the size of the code you load, which makes a lot more sense than this hard limit. And what splitting does um, is basically, I suppose, you have multiple call to map in your application to array map, for instance. Um, then basically, it will make a copy of map for each of the call site. So what this gives you is then when you just in time compile map, there's the loop inside of map. You can compile that together with the block it's given. And then you can optimize them very well together. But if you don't split, basically you would have a single copy of map that's compiled and it causes a, a thousand blocks. <laughs> it causes a hundred blocks uh, around all the app where it's called. And that would be very inefficient. Uh, so splitting can be quite important for Ruby. A small reminder about the results, like this was very small rack and Rails application and uh, the condition for measurement were quite ideal. Uh, so what I would recommend you is to benchmark your own application and if you can uh, share the result with us, whether they're good or whether they're bad. If you want to try Truffle Ruby, it's really easy. You can use your favorite Ruby manager and then you will get Truffle Ruby in native mode. So you can use Ruby install, RVM, RVM and so on. And uh, you can also uh, use GraalVM and then you get both the native and the GVM mode. And you can just get it from the website and install the Ruby component. What you get with GraalVM is you also get other languages. So you can do, you can interoperate with Java, but also JavaScript, Python, R, and all the LLVM Bitcoin languages. So C, C++, and Rust. 
and even WebAssembly recently. Uh, so all of this run in single VM, so you can very efficiently call a function from one language to the other. And you can inline through it and so on. And this is actually how we implement C extension in Trofa Ruby. And that concludes my talk, and thank you for listening.